Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Gojo's podcast. This is another part two, and I got to tell you, I am I'm beside myself to have Glodine Champion back with me. We just jumped into the Zoom room. It's it's been like two ships passing in the night. Glodine has been so busy for so many good reasons, and we jumped. I, I dare say right back into the deep end. We started talking about her her TEDx talk that just just released very very recently. We're recording this in the middle of March, and so it just released a few days ago. By the way, the link will be in the show notes. I'll say that again a few more times during the course of this podcast. But we talked not only about the talk itself, but about doing the talk and how, well, I'll let Glodine speak to it. I was about to, I was about to try to summarize our conversation. We just jumped right into it. And I was like, let me stop and hit record before we just start doing this for the next hour or so. So let me refresh you <laughs> on who Glodine is before we get to talking again. Glodine is a keynote speaker, as we're going to talk about, an author and transformational leader who specializes in leadership development, team building, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. She's a Six Sigma black belt and draws on her extensive background to transform the lives of her clients. Her life's purpose is to leave people better than she found them. Glodine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling, I'm feeling lots of gratitude. You're going to hear a couple more thank yous as we go through. Thank you for being here today. My pleasure. It's always like that's why it was so easy to just jump right in. <laughs> well, let's let's do it. Let's 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 talk about the talk. Now, first of all, let's talk about what the talk is that you're that you're so so pleased with and proud of. And I think it's I think it's worthy of of as much signal boosting as we can give it. So talk about that first, then we'll talk about doing the talk. <laughs> so it's a TEDx. And it's you mean like for people who may not know what TEDx is? Oh no, I think I think generally people kind of they That's kind of understand well, they get TED. Most people understand TED. And right. I think enough people can like follow it from there. Like TEDx is just basically like localized TEDs. Right. That's <laughs> exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So yeah, I just did my my well, my second one. This is my second one, I'm so happy to say. And it just came out yesterday. What is today? Mm-hmm. March, March 15th. And it the, the title is Enough with race already it's time for a new social construct and it it's been really hard to talk to people about it because i want to give the reveal like it's just mm-hmm. it's really <laughs> like when you see it it's just a silly it's it's so simple that it's kind of silly but it's that's what makes it so great right mm-hmm. when i was actually when i was actually recording the tedx when i got to that part i only have a few slides but when i got to that slide i wanted to stop and go wasn't that cool? And then I was like, nope, just keep talking. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, you've got it. It's like one of those things where it's like, you want to like point you on like big, big neon signs and arrows and be like, you see this, right? Isn't this, this, is, isn't this great? But you also like, you kind of understand that they're, they're going to find it. They're going to find it. I'm not, I don't right. have to hold their hand, even though I want right. to. <laughs> They'll just have their own. <gasps> that was cool moment, which, mm-hmm. which is interesting because I was the last speaker to leave the event, the venue, because <laughs> so many people stopped me to talk to me about how meaningful my talk was and how I took something as complex as race and boiled it down into uh, something people could digest and, Mm. and feel inspired to, to embody. So that was, that was great. That's fantastic. And we were talking, we were talking a little bit before I hit record about how, how, how difficult it is to not watch the view count when you're, when when a talk is just posted. And I just love that you hadn't mentioned though, that you've gotten so much feedback in the moment. That you yeah. basically like couldn't get couldn't get out of the venue. So many yeah. people were coming up to you to chat, and I was like, "It's so funny how 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 the how it comes to you, how right. how the response comes to you in different ways, and sometimes they're tremendously gratifying, and you're like, oh, this is it. This is I knew it. I knew I felt. I knew it felt good, right. and right. everyone else felt it too. And that's what that's what you want. But then you're watching the view count, and you're clicking refresh over and over again, and looking at other talks from the same night. It's like, yeah, it's. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it is very weird. And and I'm glad that I just said that to you about being the last person to leave because just just cuz your your um your folks might not know what we were talking about, but my last TEDx when it went up, it immediately like by the time I saw it, it had been out for 12 hours and already had like 1500 or 1600 views. This one has been out now for almost Actually, today, right now, would make it 24 hours, and it's only had <laughs> maybe I think it's a, a last look. It was 190 views, mm-hmm. and I was I was like spinning out, and I was sending messages to the TEDx coordinators, like, "Why is it so few when other people have like 3,000 and 7,000 before the 12 before they'd even gotten to 
well, not that many, but within 24 hours, it was that many. But here's the thing, and I'm going to say it again to myself, and, <laughs> and you all get to benefit from this. I, I, was, I was telling Kevin that when I stepped on the red carpet, like before I went out, I said a little prayer of gratitude and I asked for support. And then I stepped on that little red circle and it was like, I got a download that said, you got this. This is the beginning of the rest of your life. And I knew immediately what that meant, right? Because my goal and objective is to be a keynote speaker. I mean, I, I like coaching and consulting and doing that work, but I feel like my I the messages that I want to put out in the world uh, fuel me when I'm on stage in a different way than when I'm mm. with people like that. And I feel like I can reach more people, but I got that download and then I nailed it, like mm. nailed it, except for that, that slide I was telling you about somebody yeah. else's slide was up there. But even that, like anybody that speaks or does, or has had to present knows all it takes is one, one thing that might not even be your fault. And then you're all in your head about, Oh, I didn't do it perfectly. But mm -hmm. I saw that wasn't my slide. And I was like, that's not my slide. That's not what you're supposed to see. Fixed it. And then continued as if nothing had happened. Like hmm. nothing. And so anyway, remembering, and there were high school students there. And they took they took such good, it was like they, they swooped in to take care of me. They wanted to make sure that I, there's this thing called king cake. And this is in Louisiana. It's this, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a, it's like cake and a donut or something. It's super sweet, but <laughs> it's called a king cake. And and there's a baby, there's like a little toy baby. And if you get the baby, then at the next event, you buy the king cake is I think how that tradition goes. Oh. What, you know, during the recording, the, the, the coordinator was kind of poking fun at me because I had said to the audience, I love all of you. And so then that was the thing. Plus I made them laugh. And, you know, once you make people laugh, that's kind of, you kind of got them. You got them. <laughs> so, so they came and they made sure I had some of the, the tasty cake. And then they, they just were so loving and nurturing. That is the thing that's more important right now in, than those views, because I, I did create this crazy making story in my head about mm -hmm. what it means, you know, why I don't have as many views. And it's so dumb. It's so dumb because people are going to see it. That's what I know for a fact. Mm -hmm. and respond to it too it's also like it's, it's there's so many different ways to look at it some of them are tremendously positive others are just will just drag you down like an anchor around your neck and then you, yeah. you'll probably feel them all at any given moment because that's just that's yeah. just kind of the way that it works it's it's silly but it's also real and that's why it's good to it i'm why i'm so i was so pleased to want to just hit record on our conversation because i was like it's i think it's important to talk about this it's like you yeah. can you can acknowledge those feelings they're real, they're they're valid, and they could be silly, and they could be serious, exactly. and they could they could be both at the same time. And it's just right. important not to not to put too many obstacles in the way of that, you know? Just go ahead right. and experience it and have a conversation with yourself and maybe eat some pancakes and you know, <laughs> take a walk. And then, you know, as your feelings evolve and change, they're this growing living thing. And so it's like it's but yeah, like you said though, it's there are so many different little 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 ticks that it's really it's hard not to hit refresh on the view count. Because yeah. you just put yourself out there in a really important way and you got the message that yeah. you nailed it and you did, yeah. you were there and you got all that feedback and then you're like, you know, looking for what should in your mind come next and it right. hasn't quite arrived yet. And there's all sorts of, <laughs> all sorts of self-talk that can move into that silence that, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's no, yeah. isn't always yeah. the best kind of self-talk. We don't always treat ourselves all that great sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what though? I, I'm so glad I've done all, I've done, and I can't say all the work. Because I just said this to someone the other day. Self-love is a journey and the destination continues to shift and move, right? When you get to the destination, I'm going to say, at least I'm going to speak for myself. I hope that by the time I arrive at the destination, that the destination means that I'm not here on this planet anymore, right? I feel like the journey is is driving us toward that that in that end place if you will but part of part of the journey is honoring your feelings and I think so many people don't honor their feelings they push them down or they they give them meaning and then they get stuck in the story and the story becomes more important than so I so, that, so that's why it was so easy for me to tell you kind of where I was because I had just looked at the stupid <laughs> the views but <laughs> 
that I I just told somebody she was beating herself up. And I said, would you stop? Would you stop beating up my friend like that? And she was like, what are you talking about? And I said, you are right now being so hard on yourself over something that's really not that serious. First of all, just honor how you feel right now. How do you feel? And she said, I'm pissed off. I said, okay, good. Now, the path that you're going on right now is going to have you pissed off all day into the next day and probably into the next week. So why don't you just recognize what you're pissed off about and then honor whether or not you had anything to do with being pissed off. Because a lot of times our emotion, you know, we help create those emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So did you do something that had someone react to you in a certain way that then pissed you off? And then we we got to the root cause of it. She had said something to someone that they they misunderstood and then they snapped at her. And she didn't try to clarify what she said. She just let them snap at her. And I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. so you're pissed off at you and at them. So Mm -hmm. now that we know that, why don't you go clear it up with that other person first and then call me back? And she was like, I don't want to do that. And I was like, (laughs) why don't you just do it? You'll feel better. She was like, (laughs) I have have a few friends that say you've been glowed. So she was like, stop trying to glow me. (laughs) <laughs> oh but I she like did that. it she I did like it that. yeah she did it and she <laughs> called me back and she was like oh my god I called him and explained what I meant that I was clear that he misunderstood what I said mm-hmm. and she said he told her he was sitting over there pissed off too and I said look mm-hmm. that was two people and then it's it's like a pay it for it isn't it interesting mm-hmm. how we are more likely to pay for it negative energy than positive energy it right. moves forward easier it, it really does it's like what's well, yeah Actually, you know what? I say that out loud and I'm not sure that's true. There's something about it that makes it more accessible to kick down the road to negative energy. But I feel yeah. like with with like if you just like embrace the habit of it and just trying to switch your mindset, it right. is just as if not more easy to pass the positive down the down the road. I just I just tripped over that too. I had this little 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 story I was telling myself about how being negative is easier than being positive. But that's as I said it out loud, as it escaped my lips, I was like, wait right. a minute. That's, that's not, not true. That's true. Where'd that come from? And now I have a whole like journey of discovery to go on and be like, oh, where is that buried? Where right. is that living inside me that, that this yeah. came out so easily like that? Yes. It's so interesting. Oh, I love it. I love, I love you just got glowed. It's so great. That's like, <laughs> I heard so many things that you did there with the, with that person that I, that I love. And one of them is I've used them. I've used it before. And it really is a great pattern interrupt is when I was like, don't treat my friend like that. Yeah. When, some, when someone's beating themselves up. Because that's yeah. like you get stuck in your own story and you forget that other people care about you. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's all sorts of th- all, all sorts of shorthand that we use to describe this, like you're your own worst critic. And it's like, you know, the way we beat ourselves up and hold our, you know, yada, yada, yada. But like just framing it that way. It's like, don't treat my friend like that. Right, it, it right. just knocks people right out of their story. That's just yeah. running in the background. And you're there, right. like, little, little, you know, that's, and that's, that's such a good way to get people to start listening. And once they start listening. This is one more step away from action, which you exactly. also load them up to take. Oh, look. I'm sorry. I'm just so tickled by how like obvious and how great that is that your, that your friends and clients is like, just use your name as a verb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Explode. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> there was one other thing way, way back, like 10 minutes ago in our conversation. I like <laughs> you were talking about um, getting up on stage and talking about your desire to be a keynote speaker. Because you feel like that's really the like maybe the best way you said it in your words, but like that 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 seems like to you in your experience so mm. far the way to have the most impact to mm-hmm. deliver your message in the most effective way to the most people with the most depth. And I really liked I, I I like that because a lot of times even coaches themselves are looking for the best way to be of service. Right. And coaching ends up being a pretty decent way to start that out. And by coaching, I'm more, I'm kind of using that in the like sort of one-on-one terminology mm-hmm. where it's like you mm-hmm. are coaching another individual. But really that becoming a coach is sort of uh, the beginning of a journey to discovering exactly how you can best do the work you want to do, serve the people you want to serve, change the lives you want to change and grow the relationships you want to grow. And right. discovering that, you know what, this is the way you know, being up on stage and delivering these messages and then just having those relationships that come from that, like the people that you met afterwards who kept you, who kept you late, who, you know, kept you until, until they closed the venue down, those relationships and that, that kind of impact. I love that you have been seeking that out and have found that. And I love that you, you, I, I, I'm just, I, I keep saying, I love that you, because I love, I love this story. I love this journey here because you, in that moment, you got that acknowledgement. It's like, this is it. 
this is it. You're on that stage and you got that, like that support based off of that, that, that gratitude, you put the gratitude out there and you got back that message. Like, this is it. And it's, it's sort of something that you've, you've been knowing for a while, I'm sure, because I'm sure you've been on a journey of, you know, this is your second TEDx talk. I'm sure you've delivered plenty of other keynote speeches before you clearly chair yourself and speak on what you want to speak on very well. But I just, I love, I love that sort of milestone where it's just like, boom, yep, this is it. (laughs) Go forward, go forth. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy how, sorry, I just had another one of those moments. I feel like, I feel like the closer or the more that I do this work, the more open I am to receive whatever I'm supposed to do next. And I have Mm. this change the world project called Let's Talk About Love. And it's the, my intent was for it to go from city to city. So the first one I did was let's talk about love Monterey. And then I posted it on social media and somebody in Houston said, Oh, would you bring it to Houston? And I said, sure. So let's talk about love Houston ha- happened. Are we in March, February? Yes. It happened in fe- <laughs> February. I'm struggling to, don't um, worry. <laughs> and it didn't get the attendance that I mean, because first of all, I didn't know I didn't know anybody there. So the fact that anyone showed up not knowing who I am to me is is the blessing in and of itself. Mm-hmm. But I realized that the 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 event itself is transformational because when you can bring community members together to talk about things that matter to them and the things that they're struggling with that aren't about the community itself, because as you know, our community is only as strong as the members within it. And so if you're broken, you're not really much help to the people in your community. So creating a space where people can have these conversations, I'm seeing how powerful that is, but I'm also recognizing that it it can't be a couple of hours. Like I can't change the world in two hours, but I can make an impact in in a longer amount of time. So I'm trying to figure out how to make that just be a full day kind of experience that people you know, pay a nominal fee. I don't want, I want, I don't, I will only want to charge. So people actually show up because I had over a hundred people RSVP for that event, but well, I guess that would be about right. 25, 30% showed up. <laughs> so, but just to make sure that people are there because I'm seeing how important it is. So it's kind of like a group coaching. I'm starting to see that it's like a group coaching session. Yeah. It's just so powerful. Right. And then I don't have to do all the talking. I I tell stories and I and I share my experiences just to get people comfortable enough to to share or just be reflective. So anyway, I'm gonna do it around. I'm gonna stay in California and travel around California. So it looks like the next one's gonna be in Oakland because somebody called me yesterday about coming to Oakland with it. So I'm just gonna keep doing it until it feels like I got the right pieces together. Yeah. Because people asking for people, you know, people get coaching for a number of different reasons. In in the business space, leaders get coaching usually because it's punitive. They've done something and now they're being forced to take coaching so they can become better leaders. But I'd rather people get coaching for personal development or leadership development by choice, right? Mm-hmm. Which is different than you helping me craft my business. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that when I was working with some business coaches to help me when I first started like social media coaches, I feel like part of that conversation should be that personal development piece as well. Because if you don't know your message and someone's trying to force you to create a message or they're trying to tell you how social media works, if you're not clear and you don't know how to articulate that you're not clear, like I was screaming, I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying right now because I hadn't figured it out. But Mm -hmm. I just feel like, we miss so many opportunities by not taking those moments to to remind ourselves or remind the people we're working with that you're on a you're on a journey. It should be mm-hmm. your self love journey. We look at love in such a strange way, but yeah, that self love mm-hmm. journey is not the ego journey, right? You know that, but some people just mm-hmm. can't. A lot of people, lot of people don't know that, or they know yeah. it, but they don't understand how it applies to them because it's, it's right. it can be so. It's it's such a flip to like take the lesson of the put your own mask on first sort of like right. you know emergency right. on a pl- emergency landing on a plane thing where it's like no 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 you want to serve you want to help you want to have impact you want to be a member of the community you want to contribute that's great yes it starts with you right that starts with you right. now 
So does the egomaniacal up your own butt, pardon my French journey. <laughs> well, it also starts with you. It just happens right. to stay with you, but that's a different right. that's a different thing entirely. But the kind of impact you want to have, the communities you want to be a part of and grow and contribute to, it begins with the work on you. It begins with that yes. self-love and that awareness. And then it radiates out from there. And I love that, like that group, this, this, this group coaching thing you kind of got going on it kind of em- exemplifies that where it's like, you bring mm-hmm. like a, a campfire up to a group and you're like, you're doing your thing and you just invite everyone to come and like, you know, put a little sticker or a torch into the fire and take it over and start their own little fires and have their own right. little campfire chats. And like, you can watch like literally the spark that you're generating catch fire here, there, and everywhere. And you're seeing people doing the work and you're helping to right. guide it. And that's, I don't know, that's, that's, I'm, I'm kind of slightly getting chills by the idea of just <laughs> that, like that catching on. Cause I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. It came to me in a dream. And they, Don't most, just, most of the best ones do. <laughs> yeah, I just um, I'm part of this um, group called the Association of Transformational Leaders. We have a retreat twice a year and the they usually bring in these amazing speakers and people that are doing what we do out in the world. But they it's coming. It, they're doing it so that we can stay f- full and continue to grow and get something. And they had someone this last one talk about dreams and how our spirit guides and our angels are giving us messages. We often through our dreams, because sometimes we don't hear them any other way. And even though you don't may, may not remember your dream, you're getting, you're getting messages about what you could or should be doing in the world. And mm. so when she said that, I was like, Oh, that's why it, I just woke up. I don't remember anything about the dream. I just remember waking up and, and let's talk about love Monterey was what I I was like, what does that mean? And then I said it out loud. So I guess that was the acknowledgement of it, right? Mm-hmm. And then then the, all the opportunities and the thoughts and whatever started to just flow from there. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. And I was, I, we digress. I just looked up at the clock because I realized I might be being a bad host and I hadn't checked the Zoom clock. And we've, we've been recording for like 25 minutes, chatting for 35 minutes. I'm just like, geez, this was, and this is exactly what I remembered and expected for us to be able to like just just talking about the real some of the real like important stuff and again yeah. it's some some of it's simple some of it's easy some of it's obvious but it doesn't all always assemble for people correctly and i yeah. feel like it's just it's just good to shine some extra light shine a little a little bit of extra light from our from our from our little individual campfires on stuff i yeah. i selfishly want to keep you and just keep this conversation going but i know <laughs> we both have have plenty to do yeah. um gluteen Thank you. I know I told you I'd say it again. This has been this has been a really like this has been a, a meaty conversation. Like it's, it's taking all of my willpower not to want to have like the dream conversation too because that's like that's <laughs> also near and dear to my heart. <laughs> but yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna save that for a future episode because okay. I'm, I'm I'm almost certainly gonna have to have you back on like maybe later <laughs> in the summer after you know after the, right right the, your TEDx talk you know it blows up and goes into the five figures. Right. <laughs> I'm going yes. to put that out there. I'm going to put that out there into the world. What I love that? that. Thank you. <laughs> where, before I let you go, uh, a reminder, and obviously I'll put links to everything, including this TEDx talk in the show notes, but where can people best find out more about you, who you are, what you do, and also what you're up to if they want to know like where you're going to be at, how they can connect with you, how they can start a conversation, where they can see you. So yeah, where can people best find all that out? The best place to find out about me and what I do is on my website, glodeanchampion.com. The best way to find out where what I'm up to and what I'm where I'm going to be is on either Facebook or uh, Instagram. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, you can also find out about me on LinkedIn as well. But hmm. I, I use I use Facebook. I don't use Facebook to sell myself. I use Facebook to share kind of my journey. So. <laughs> I share my self-love Sundays or what I'm doing or when I'm traveling or my, my, my culinary skills, whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's the fun part of me that you get to experience on Facebook and Instagram. I like that. I'll make sure, I'll make sure there are a little links. I'm, I'm sure the links to all this are on your website too, but I'll make sure yeah. that they end up in the show notes as well. All right. Uh, all right. Go treat yourself to something nice. I know, I, I know you, you, you kind of jokingly said you might go, go get some pancakes to eat your feelings, but <laughs> that then which is like that's 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 a kevin move as well it was like i'm gonna make myself something something sweet and nice right but yes and one more time thank you two part thank you thank you for being here with me today like i really really enjoyed this conversation and thank you for for doing what you do for the work that you do for the way that you're evolving putting yourself out into the world 
locking in, being vulnerable and available. And thanks for thanks for being willing to to, to glow people. From time <laughs> My to time pleasure. To Thank and you it, for having me, Kevin. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. And hey, to the audience out there, you, I mean, if you've been listening all this time, you already know you want to get to know Glow a little bit better. It's just, <laughs> it's, a, it's an absolute delight. So do yourself a favor and click any or all of the links in the show notes of this episode. Do yourself a favor, meet Glow. And in the meantime, we will talk to you all again very soon.